Hello everyone and welcome to a new series here on Rensei Gaming. Today we'll be playing one of my favorite games of all time, uh, Drakengard. Um, this series is, it's going to start out a little slow. Um, we're going to have a chill time, we're just going to have you know some conversations, do some repetitive killing of a lot of enemies, and then as the series progresses it's going to get real wild, so you're going to want to subscribe and you're going to want to be here, especially for the back half. Anyway, this uh, intro is pretty good, but I'm actually going to skip it. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube somewhere if you want to see it. And we're just going to get straight into it. Uh, game difficulty set to normal. This game can be pretty difficult, uh, but I don't see any reason to go to easy. It is an ancient time, and dragons still roam upon the earth. Two great powers, the Union and the Empire, wage fierce war for the control of a goddess who protects the harmony of the world. In only a short time, the Empire has become powerful beyond reckoning, and now it turns to attack the castle where the Union safeguards the goddess. The world teeters on the brink of chaos. Its fate now lies in the hands of one man. All right, so we got the evil empire and the good kingdom. Pretty much, you know, set off to a normal RPG start here. Stuff you'd expect from Square Enix. I don't know why the, the book was the signal and not the thousand dudes fighting outside, but hey. Kaim and his Union soldiers battle towards the castle to protect Furii, even though it's their castle and I don't know why the enemy's inside. Goddess of the Seals and Kaim's only sister. The Empire murdered Kaim's parents and destroyed his kingdom. Now it assaults the very castle where his sister is safeguarded. With revenge cold in his heart, Kaim hurls himself at the army of the Empire. Um, we got some things we can do here. You get one of these at the beginning of every mission verse, as this game calls them. Uh, we can change weapons, but we only have one, so instead we're just going to continue. Alright. The Empire has surrounded the castle! So, this game was made uh, back when Dynasty Warriors was really big. So, it plays very similar to that. Uh, you... I'll, I'll deal with that in a second. Uh, you hit square a lot, and enemies die. Um, occasionally, uh, when your sword flashes, you can hit triangle for a bigger move. And you just kind of repeat that uh, forever. Uh, there's a little more complicated stuff to it. Like, for instance, that green bar at the bottom there is a magic meter. And you can use triangle to cast magic spells, uh, which, at least in the early game here, is going to be the best damage we can possibly get. Uh, as far as the series goes, um, normally in my... Uh, let me go to the map real quick to show you. Uh, each one of these dots here on this map uh, is about eight, seven or eight dudes. 
Uh, so there's like a, over a thousand people on this map. And if I were playing this game on my own time, I would run through here and hunt down every single one of them. Uh, but we're not doing that. Uh, this is not my own time. So this is your time as well. So instead, we're just going to run objectives. Um, if I end up under a level, not that level matters too much in this game, uh, then I will go through and grind on my own time. Uh, but we're just going to try to get through the story to the best. Because honestly, with this game, the gameplay, it's not bad. Uh, for a Dynasty Warriors clone, but it is uh, the story is the reason you want to play this game. Uh, also, if you run a long enough distance uh, before you attack, you can get that dashing attack. Um, so I won't do it so much in this mission because this mission is really easy. I say as I get knocked on my ass, uh, but you'll see me do like a U-turn a lot so that I can get that move off and then run around and get it again. Um, I'm not gonna show that at the moment, but that's a popular strategy. You'll definitely see me use it. Alright, enemies with targets over their head are the ones we are going after, obviously, so... Let's just lay into them. And as I said, magic is going to be the bulk of our damage early on here, so let's throw some of that out. It recharges fairly quickly. Um, a hit gives you, like, half a point, and it only takes five points to cast a spell, so there's no real reason not to use it. Also, you appear to be, and I, I just learned this that second, invincible while you're casting magic, so another reason to use it. Eventually you'll find weapons that do so much damage that the magic is irrelevant, but we are not to that yet. Also, as you get chains, uh, enemies drop various items. Um, healing orbs, orbs that explode and throw enemies all over the place, which is what that is. Um, there's also an orb you get at 100 here that makes you really strong. It makes all your attacks do a ton of damage. So it's good to make sure you're always chaining your enemy kills together, if at all possible. Uh, again, since I'm running for objectives, that may or may not actually end up happening. Uh, yeah, we've already covered that uh, magic attack. Uh, maybe a triangle whenever the sword flashes. Uh, as you level up your weapons, which is another uh, gameplay element we'll get to when we get to it, uh, you get longer combos and you have different points where you can get that flash and break in with a powerful attack. Uh, generally, unless the enemy is going to a counterattack though, you're always best off hitting it at the last possible chance. And magic, and magic. Uh, this can be a very long mission uh, if you go around. Uh, even if you don't kill everything, if you just kind of kill everything you run into, it can be a pretty long mission. Uh, but if you run for the targets, it is really short. Dodge that. I might have to knock these guys around a bit to get through them. Uh, these bigger guys here have shields, so they can block your damage. Uh, they are some of the most annoying enemies. I don't want to say in the game, but at least for the first half of it or so. Learning that magic makes you invincible has changed the game entirely for me. I've played this game through all the way, through ending E if you've played it before, uh, multiple times. Um, and I just learned that today. And I didn't use it. I thought about it though. Let's throw some magic out. Get another one. Uh, magic also changes, uh, depending on your weapon. Uh, with Kaim's sword, which is the sword we have equipped right now, it is this fireball. Um, we will get other spells. They're all variation on a couple of themes, though. Uh, most of the spells are similar across the different weapons. Protect her. Protect Furiai. Alright, we have successfully infiltrated our own castle. And we are ready to go in and check out the dragon in the Castle Bailey. Did pretty well. 
Um, considering how fast I ran through that, I didn't even get a single level off of it, but that's okay. I, your levels, at least for Kaim, uh, not to spoil anything, uh, are based solely off of how many kills you get. Also, we got a second weapon, the Bone Breaker, which is an awful weapon, but I'll show it anyway. Let's go ahead and equip that. And we will go ahead and save the game. Oh, actually save the game, though. And we got plenty of time. Let's go ahead and do the next mission as well. Dragon? What? A pact! There's no other way! <gasps> what to make you worthy of a pact with me? Worthy or not, I wish to live. Despise me if you will, but I shall not die! Your answer! A pact or death! few audio problems there, I'll see if I can't fix that later. Inside the castle, Kaim finds before him a dragon, the proud beast cruelly fettered. His parents were murdered by a dragon, but Kaim knows that a pact will give him the power he needs to battle the Empire, and the dragon knows that only a pact can save its life. In the besieged castle, the dying pair make the fateful decision to live. Now I do have multiple weapons here, and what I would recommend, uh, because the Bonebreaker is so awful, uh, you can unequip and re-equip Kaim's sword in order to start with it, and then I'll have to switch right off the bat. Uh, but I am actually going to use the Bone Breaker to show it off, so here we go. Uh, the Empire was already in here, of course, so let's see. It's Oh, it's so hard to use. It's so slow. So slow. Yeah, you can hold down the R2 key, which I will show eventually, because I am going to have to switch back. Uh, it does have this really cool uh, spell that creates a lot of damage, actually. And if you can get it off, the uh, magic attack from it is really good. It travels a long distance. Uh, it's just, it's so slow, and the Empire will interrupt you out of your combo every single time. <laughs> See? So let's, let's get back to Kaim's Sword. Okay. Now, Kaim Sword is significantly weaker, uh, but it's fast, so you don't get interrupted hardly ever. Uh, let's look at the map. I, is the objective is to kill everybody? Yes, it is. So let's just get that done. Come now. Taste the steel of my sword. You know, Kaim's voice actor is really good. I can't, I can't wait to enjoy his uh, performance uh, for the entire rest of this game. Get away from the dragon, man! Just had enough. Uh, let's throw a fireball onto these guys. Soften them up a bit. Uh, the guys with the circles next to their name, like that guy. Um, my understanding is they're supposed to be like the leaders of the packs that they appear in, and if you kill them, it's supposed to make the rest of the guys weaker, although I'm not 100% sure that that's actually what happens. Um, but I have definitely, I've read that somewhere. There's a chest over there, let's go pick that up. It's probably health, actually, so let's wait a second. I need to, I need to be throwing more fireballs, or this is going to take forever. There we go. With that which killed my parents? You're the one who offered it, Kaim. Each mission has a time limit. I think with very few exceptions, it's always an hour. 
Uh, none of these missions are going to take us an hour. Uh, no. Some of them are going to take some time, but not an hour. I need to be throwing more fireballs. Sometimes you just get into a groove and you just, you know, square triangle, square, 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 triangle, square, 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 triangle. But really, there's a lot more damage in those fireballs. You need to be throwing them out. There's absolutely nothing bad that comes from running out of MP, so. I believe the other two are over here. Yep. Get in there, do some damage. It probably also makes sense to make sure that they're both in front of me, but I'm not worried about playing completely optimally. As I said earlier, this game can get challenging, but it's not hard. And generally when it's challenging, it's because of camera angles, if I'm being honest, uh, which is a reoccurring theme throughout the Guard series. There we go. Still alive? You're blessed by the devil's luck. A pact with you. Probably be a rad time. You should consider it. At least. I didn't even act no, I definitely took damage. I got the healing item though. Uh, oh, oh no, I did get the level out of it. I thought I wouldn't. Um, all the leveling does for Kaim is increase your maximum health. So if you can manage to avoid uh, taking damage, then you don't have to worry about it. I'm not that good. Nor do I think anyone's probably that good. Uh, yeah, let's overwrite the data. Um, it is going to drop us in a cutscene after this, isn't it? Yep. And as we all know, uh, when you combine your weird chest orb with the dragon's hairball, uh, your clothes get clean. It's the number one laundry detergent. Ten years running. But now Kaim has a pet dragon, and that's pretty rad, so I'm into it. I'm into it. Gotta go through the pain of, you know, ripping your heart out of your chest, but it is what it is. They attack from the sky. Uh, I'm going to end this episode here, though. These episodes are just, or chapters are just running into one another. Uh, I will catch you guys in the next one, where we are going to fly this dragon. Peace.